In the last video, we built the functionality to allow the user to read statuses for themselves and all other users, but there's no way to allow the user to update their own status. So that's what we're going to fix in this video. We're going to add one more menu icon here, which is a pencil icon, which indicates that the user can edit it and modify their status. So to get started, let's open up Android Studio and go to the menu main, which is what we had uh, added for the logout option. So we're going to add one more menu item here. And the title of this menu option is going to be edit status. But no one's actually going to see the text because we're going to add an icon. So the ID, first of all, is going to be mi edit, which is menu icon edit. And we're going to add a new icon here. So to do that, Android Studio has a pretty powerful way to create your own vector assets, which is exactly what, what we're going to use using a lot of kind of open source icons. So I'm going to go to Drawable, right click on it, tap on New Vector Asset. And then in terms of clip art, we're going to search for something called Edit, which is this pencil icon. And I'm going to just call this IC Edit, then tap on Next, and it'll automatically add it into the Drawable folder. So now that we've added that, that'll be the icon. So I'll just start typing drawable IC edit. And one important thing here is we don't want this to be buried, buried inside of the overflow menu for the main activity menu. Instead, we want it to be shown as an action. So in the show as action, tap on always and tap apply. And so what that did is that it brought up this menu option into the top level. So if we run the app now, we can see what this looks like. We should hopefully see one more menu option here, which is the edit pencil icon. Awesome. So in order to register something and do something when this icon is clicked, let's go back into main activity. Let me exit a few of these tabs. Um, and in the on options item selected, we're going to have one more condition here for if the item ID selected is equal to the one that we just added, r.id.mi edit. And in this case, let's add a log statement just so we know what's happening. So the objective here is we want to show a alert dialog, uh, which allows the user to update their status. So I'll say show alert dialog to edit status. And I'm going to delegate the work of that actually to a method called show alert dialog. And then this is not defined yet, but if we click on this red light bulb, then Android Studio will define it for us. And so the way we can create an alert dialog in Android is actually pretty straightforward. We're going to define a variable called dialog. And this is going to be, we're going to use the alert dialog builder. This is the builder pattern. And I'll say alert dialog, and then we're going to use the one from Android X app compat dot builder. And then this takes in, the builder takes in as a parameter the context. So we'll pass in the activity, which is an example of a context. And then we'll just set various properties on here. For example, set title. And the title we'll pass in is update your emojis. And then another example of what we want to set on the alert dialog is the negative button. We'll say cancel. And then the listener, we have to pass in a listener here. We're going to just pass in null. And then set positive button. And they'll be OK. And again, the listener will be null because we're going to be attaching the information about what to do when this positive button is clicked a little bit later on. Then we'll say uh, dot show. And in order to attach that listener when the positive button is clicked, that's what we're going to do right here. We'll say dialog dot get button dialog interface dot positive button and then set a click listener. So this code gets executed every time the positive button is clicked. So I'll just leave a log statement for that. Let's say clicked on positive button. Right now you can see that there's no way for the user to actually input anything, right? Because we haven't set up an edit text here. But I just want to show you what this looks like first. So now if I tap on this edit icon, you can see that we have this dialog pop up which says update your emojis. And right now if I tap on these the options, nothing really happens. 
So what we want to do now is actually have a view show up in that alert dialog where the user can input their new status. And so the way this works is you can have another method on the builder called set view. And we're going to pass in the edit text here. And I'm actually going to create the edit text manually, uh, programmatically right here. But of course, if you wanted to do something a little fancier with having control, easy control over like things like the margin or padding, I'd recommend you actually define an XML layout file where you can define the edit text. But just for the sake of expediency, again, um, I'm going to define it right here. So I'll say val edit text is equal to a new edit text. And then this edit text that we're creating in Kotlin code takes in uh, context. And for now, I actually don't want to be concerned at all about how do we restrict the input of this edit text to only be emoji. So that'll be something that we to do we mark as a to do for the next video. But for now, now we have this edit text. So when the user clicks on the positive button, we want to extract the value out of that edit text. So let's say edit text dot text dot to string, and then save that into a variable, which is called um, emojis and entered. So this is the what the user desires to update their status with, right? This is the emoji that they just entered. If this input is blank, which basically means is blank is kind of a helper function in Kotlin. Is blank means either is the status empty or is it just consisting of white space. So if they said space, 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 that's not something that's valid. Then we want to tell the user this is invalid. Cannot submit empty text. And then we want to return here. There's one more thing that we need in order to update the signed in user, which is, of course, we need the signed in user, right? So I'm going to grab the user, um, current user. And that's coming from the Firebase authentication object. And if the current user is null, which it really shouldn't be, because you only ever see the main activity if you've logged in from the, the previous activity, login activity. But just as an error handling, we should just make sure that if this is null, then we want to return early again. So I'll copy this toast and just update the message here to say no signed in user. Let me fix the spelling. Okay, so we'll return early here as well. So here, if we've gotten past both of these if statements, now we want to update the update Firestore with the new emojis. So here, what we can do is say db dot collection on the users collection. We want to find the corresponding user, and the way we we'll do that we do that is we find the document which has that user's ID. Because if you think back to our cloud function, the document that we created has the same UID as the user that was just created. So I'll say current user dot UID, and we want to now update this user with certain data. And there are a couple ways you could input the data here. The way I like, which is I think the simplest, is you can just put in pairs of data. So you can say the field path, which is in our case emojis. That's what we called the attribute name. And the value of this key is going to be emojis entered. And once this is done, you can now dismiss the dialog. Awesome, let's try it. So now hopefully we should see kind of a very plain edit text in the alert dialog. And when we tap on the OK button, the positive button, we should be able to get the value out of the edit text and then update the emoji. So OK, I think we built the app properly. If we go back to Firestore, let's look at my user. And right now I have this panda, herb, and heart icon. So I'm going to update my emojis with something simple. Like, I'm really in love. So I have those three. And now you can see it got updated here. And also in Firestore, you can see it got updated immediately as well. So it seems like that works. So the downside of this is that you know we're not actually restricting the input here. So I could just say, hello, tap OK. And actually, we do update the status here to be hello. And it shows up in the app as well, which we don't want. We want to restrict the input of that edit text 
to only be emojis. So that'll be the job for the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are still with me. Leave me any comments or questions you have, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.